Hi, welcome back. I'm Vicki. My husband often teases me about quilting. He says all you're doing is taking fabric, you're cutting it up in little pieces and then you're sewing it back together again. He might have a point, but I tell him as a woodworker, he's tearing down trees, cutting them up, sanding them a bit, putting them back together into furniture. He does mission style furniture, it's his favorite. And, and he does a fabulous job at it, it's gorgeous stuff. And I don't think he'd be very happy if he had to do, say, bar stools. See, because that's his style. And that's the thing with quilting. We all have our own style that we'd like to bring out in our quilts. Along with that, there's some technique. And I'm going to go over one of the most basic techniques, and that's a four patch. And we're going to talk about seams and why they are a quarter inch. You know, it's a good place to start. It's a good foundation to start on. So thank you for joining me again, and uh, let's get at it, okay? And stay to the end for inspiration. Now, when we're talking about seams, why a quarter of an inch? Well, I'm going to show you what happens if it's any smaller than a quarter of an inch. This is done at an eighth of an inch. And uh, this, is, this is good quilters fabric, fabric, excuse me there. And what happens is if you have seams that are shorter than a quarter of an inch, you run into this problem where your seams can pull out. And see how that's pulling actually out the threads? And this can be even a bigger problem if you haven't cut your fabric on a, on a good square. And when you're dealing with smaller pieces, a lot of people don't really think it's necessary, and maybe they might be right, but if you're dealing with a longer strip, you can skew your fabric if it's not square. And how you can tell if it's not square is look, look how easily, whoa. So if you don't have a quarter inch seam and you sewed that pin, you run the risk of it may be good and tight here, the seam, but not here. Okay, we know that a quarter inch seam does the job, but if you want to have wider seams, how does that affect your quilt? Here I have five eighths and here I have a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna show you a picture up against a window of what visually you can maybe be able to see when you have your quilt all batted up. But I'm also going to show you the difference in fabric that you're going to use. So you actually are wasting fabric by using the bigger seams and quilters fabric can be pricey. This little bit here adds up over a larger quilt. So sticking to a quarter inch seam is cost effective and it does the job. We're going to talk about a four patch, often used in quilting. And if we went back to the blocks that I talked about last time, here we go. There's a four patch right there. So what it is, is generally four pieces of, well, it is absolutely four pieces of fabric sewn together. And you would, of course, do the right sides together and you would sew them along like that. And then you'd open them up and sew them together. But in this day and age, with rotary cutters and stuff like that, it's sometimes easier to do what they call strip piecing, where you take strips of fabric, sew them on a seam, and then cut them up so that they look like this. And then you would take these two, and you would sew them together like this. And this is where it gets a little trickier. You have something called nested seams, or you're gonna to try to get something called nested seams. Because when you have nested seams, your quilt will lie flat. And this is what I mean by nested seams. See how this, there's a little fold there and a fold back, and a fold back, and that's from the fold that you created when you sewed these together. If you pin them together and sew them together so that there's four pieces of fabric on one side like that, can you see that? If you were a hand quilter, you'd be cursing yourself because that's a lot of fabric to go through to try, try and quilt through. But then the other thing of it is that it doesn't really lie flat. How you want to make sure that you're going to get the seams nice and tight together so you get a nice sharp seam there. So you're going to take a pin and you're going to put it down into where the seam is, but you're not gonna put it straight down because if you put it straight down, when you tip it, you're gonna to pull it back up. See, you're gonna knock it out of place by 
probably about an eighth of an inch. So instead, you're gonna butt those seams up, you're gonna wiggle them a little bit with your fingers so you can feel it, it's nice and flat. You're gonna take it from down here, and you're gonna bring it up through the seams, and you can feel the seam through the back side so that those are nicely pinned together and then still have it straight across there. Do a nine patch. And what we have here is we're just extending the fact that we have one seam to now that we have two seams that we have to deal with. Very quickly, just like um, with the quarter patch or the four patch, that often it's done with strip piecing. And what you would do here then is you would take two types of strips, one with colors on the outside and one colors on the inside. What you most often will do then is press the seams in two different directions. See here, the middle one is pressed to the outside, and see here, the middle one is pressed, the middle ones are pressed to the inside. So when you cut those up, you end up with two pieces, like this, and there's your seams. So when you put those together, when you put those together, and you do your little squishy thing, with your fingers and you put your pins through, you will have really nice nested seams. Okay, and then when you open that up and you get it together and you iron it out, there's your nine patch. So the goal here is, regardless of whether you're doing the four or quarter patch or the nine patch, is that everything is lying nice and flat and you don't have any built up seams. And you have, if you're into precision, you have nice straight lines coming through all your seams, okay? So, we talked a little bit about pressing. It can be a, a big discussion. Generally, generally, you would press your seams to the darkest color. And then when you look, turn it over, you're not gonna see a shadow, say, underneath if the seam was pressed to the lighter side. It, there's no perfect way, and there's a lot of discussion over this, but for me, to keep my seams organized, pressing to the darkest side is the most helpful. And uh, when you think about it, mathematically over a larger quilt, you're never gonna get it right, but I find that helps the most. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I'm gonna leave you with some nine patch, quarter patch inspiration. Thank you. Build your best quilt with Be Better Quilting. Bye now.